Howdy folks, Sonny South. Hope everybody doing real good. Cube steak chili on the menu this evening. What we're going to be doing today is making up an outstanding pot of chili that's got some characteristics to a chili Colorado or a steak chili, but instead of using dried chili and simmering the, uh, the beef down in a chili sauce, we're going to be using chili powder. And for that, I've got an outstanding Texas style chili powder. It's Gephardt comes out of San Antonio. They've been around about 125 years. An outstanding Texas-style chili powder. If you can't find it in the store, you can get a couple of bottles of it off of Amazon. It's not too expensive. For us cook, you're going to need a couple of slices of bacon. We're going to get the fat rendered out of that, and that's what we're going to sear this uh, beef off in before we get to the simmering. Other ingredients, a whole onion diced, bell pepper diced, jalapeno diced, Gonna need some brown sugar, some cumin, uh, a little bit of oregano. I've got some dried cilantro here. You can leave that out if you want to. Gonna need a couple of packs of saison, a few cloves of garlic, big old can of whole peeled tomatoes, some reduced sodium or unsalted beef broth, smoked paprika, a little Worcestershire, and you're gonna need about half a cup of coffee. Sounds a little strange, but I tell you, it's got to go in here. Gonna make it extra good. Let's get to cooking. We're going to be using this old wore out enamel Dutch oven pot for this chili. I got four slices of bacon chopped up here. We're going to start out in a cold pot. I'm going to let this uh, bacon render down and uh, get crisped up a little bit and then we'll get it out of this pot. In the meantime, we're going to get this uh, cube steak chopped up. And on this cube steak or Swiss steak, whatever you want to call it, it's basically a, a round steak that's been ran through a tenderizer. We're going to go in here and cut this into some cubes. And you can do whatever size you want to. Bacon's browned up pretty good. I'm going to go in here and get, get it out of the pot. I'm going to leave this bacon fat behind. That's why I got about a tablespoon of bacon fat in there. We're going to turn this fire up and I'm going to get a high smoke point cooking oil in. About a tablespoon of uh, that's avocado oil. We're going to let that heat up a little. We're going to go in with this cube steak chunks. And I'm going to do this in two batches. We can get a nice little sear on here. And we're going to leave this chopped cube steak here a few minutes and just let it brown up a little bit. I'm starting to get a little browning action here. Just take your time on this. Make sure you get this uh, this meat browned up real nice because a lot of flavors comes out of that browning. Get our little chopped up steak cubes out of the pot and then we'll get the second half in here. And on this second batch you notice I toss this around a lot and I scrape this fond up because when that beef hits the hot pan it starts immediately releasing water. You can see all that, that's water that's bubbling there. And you want to do that to get that fond broke up so it doesn't burn on you. Usually when you're trying to brown something off, you just want to lay it down and leave it alone. But when you've got a fond that's already built, you've got to get it broke up or to burn. So we'll let this set here, and it's basically stewing in its own water right now. That'll evaporate. 
and then it'll start frying up and we'll get it nice and brown like his first batch gonna be extra good all right she's back to frying now it took a few minutes get that moisture evaporated second batch browned up here pretty good broth in this pot get it deglazed here pretty good well with a little more oil I'm gonna get an onion in bell pepper jalapeno good pinch of salt some black pepper I'm gonna let these vegetables saute here a few minutes until they are uh, softened up All right, he's been cooking down here a few minutes and softened up. And we're gonna get a tablespoon of smoked paprika in. We're gonna get this chili powder in. We're gonna do one tablespoon, two tablespoons. We'll probably add some more here shortly. And I got about a tablespoon of cumin. We'll get that in. A couple of cloves of chopped garlic. Let's toast these spices up here a minute. Bloom out real good and get happy. It's smelling pretty good. Right, we got our spices toasted. We're going to go in with some uh, low sodium beef broth. Get a pack of Saison in, and about a, another half a pack of Saison. Some coffee. Let's go in with about a third cup of coffee. Gonna get some little Worcestershire in, about a tablespoon. We're gonna need some brown sugar, a tablespoon. I got some oregano. We're going to put about a teaspoon and a half in there. And I've got some cilantro, dried cilantro. We'll do about a teaspoon and a half of that. And on these uh, whole tomatoes, I'm just going to go in here with a steak knife and just kind of chop them in. Now you can leave these maters out of here. If you want this to be more like a chili Colorado, uh, just leave the maters out. Ain't gonna make no difference. Now whatever juice in the can, I'm gonna pour that right in there. We're just about done getting this uh, chili braising sauce together, but we need to thicken it a little bit, and I'm gonna get some flour in here. I'm going to do about two tablespoons. And we're going to whisk this flour into this chili sauce through this strainer so that we don't end up with any lumps. Because you see what that flour's doing there? Got us a little flour in there. It's going to help thicken that sauce a little bit. That was about two tablespoons of flour, and it, it thickened this a little bit. That's about what we want right there. Put the bacon in here. Let's give this a taste. I'll we'll need some more chili powder. Get about another tablespoon in there. And it's pretty good on salt. We're going to let this cook with the lid off so it is going to reduce and concentrate. So we'll taste it after it's cooked down.
we've been simmering about an hour and uh, I've stirred this about every 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure we don't have anything sticking to the bottom of the pot because there is some flour in here and you can see the beef is really starting to break down the smaller pieces are kind of coming apart a little bit and that's what makes this extra good let's see what we're looking like on tenderness it's getting there I'm gonna give it probably about another 30 minutes and uh, I scrape some of the fat off the top comes up to the top get that off of there give this sauce a taste can't resist got pretty good consistency that's pretty darn good it probably needs a little salt a little bit in there let this go a little longer see y'all back shortly it's been simmering a total of about an hour and 45 minutes, and it is looking real good. It is smelling real good. That is a nice red chili right there. I'm going to give it one final taste, see if it need anything. Delish. Boy, I tell you, that right there is an outstanding chili. And this beef is definitely tender because it's starting to fall apart in the sauce. Let's get this bowled up. Dinner time. Get us a little cheese on here. A little green onion. We're gonna need some crackers. Gonna need a little hot sauce and a beer. Let's go in here and see how it's hitting. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Delicious. That cube steak has such a deep, uh, beefy flavor. Mmm. That chili sauce is delicious. And that little bit of coffee we added mimics what you would normally get from the earthiness of, uh, like, Wahilo dried chilies. That's it, folks. Some cube steak chili. Getting that time of the year. Till next time. Peace.